Ladies and gentlemen, today is the big day. I'm wearing a mask and surgical gloves, so not to contaminate what's inside here. And I will try to do it as surgically and carefully as possible. Make a small prayer now. <clears throat> the great Louis Doubleman and the hope that maybe this tobacco will be in fair condition. I shall begin the procedure. I will make a small incision now on the tax seal as carefully as I can. It appears the first step in this surgical procedure has worked. First I will attempt a twist of the lid to see if it will release in that way. Well, that's interesting. It's pretty stiff. I will attempt one time again to see if I can release the lid just by twisting it. That has worked. That has worked. And I did not hear any hiss of a vacuum release. So we get closer to the entombed tobacco. I'm expecting this broken flake probably. It might be very dry, but there may be some aroma The lid I will now, in the next procedure, remove. What's that music in the background? It's sealed in a plastic bag with a plastic seal now I'm slightly puzzled there was here a seal A rubberized seal on the inside here. And now I'm puzzled because I'm starting to think this cannot be a tin technology from 80 years ago. Again, the facts as a scientist one would accept that uh, the evidence is what it is and uh, I could maybe believe this is from the 60s, perhaps. Maybe. Very good condition, not a lot of rust here. And that tobacco looks in good condition. As far as I can see in the bag, it looks in good condition. This is 
very strange. That is a plastic tag that cannot be from those years ago. That must be, I don't know, even the 60s uh, seem too early. The plastic is uh, in good condition. And it really doesn't look that old. Did they have plastic bags? Yes, in the 60s they did. Polythene, it was actually, polythene was developed and, and um, in the war years, so in the 40s, but then I must correct everything I was saying about the dating of this tin. I do not think it is from the late 1930s or 40s. I think it must be from the 60s. And as I said, it's possible that um, the Doberman factory, um, the, the business was actually bought by Brinkman and uh, Odenkot in 1962. And it's true that the main factory was bombed in 1940, but they may have in Rotterdam produced some tobacco at another location or maybe rebuilt a, a factory. And then this tobacco could be from the early 60s. So we're back to 60 years old. Um, it's much more likely with this kind of seal technology the chances are that this tobacco may is certainly looks to me look at this try and get some more light on it it looks in the condition that it could be smoked i'm sure it's probably going to be pretty dry always is in the case of investigations that surprises come along. I shall continue with the procedure and we shall remove the plastic seal. Which remains intact as a seal. It's obviously things you can close and, and reclose, you see. Even this thing comes over it as a cap at the end. West Germany. The plot thickens. There's a patent number. So this seal was made after the war, definitely in West Germany and Schlumm was probably a packaging company that made this seal that confirms this is probably from 1960 or 61 something like that I think that confirms now what we were saying that this must be from the 1960s I shall continue with the procedure and I shall untwine the plastic bag and at this point we will have a closer look at the tobacco which looks <laughs> looks more like a kind of ribbon cut There are some thicker bits and less thicker bits, but that's, let's dig about, it's quite dry. There are some thicker bits a bit further down, and I suppose you might call this a broken flake. Yes. If you see, there's some larger pieces like this. That is a broken flake. I will attempt to 
see if there's an aroma. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, before our very eyes, 60 year old tobacco opened and in pretty good condition, pretty good condition, I think you would say. There's a slight aroma, a little bit earthy tobacco. Not sure if there's a slight vinegar touch, that may be from the wine topping. But very faint, very faint. Well, we're back on film here and uh, I will attempt to judge the humidity. I have got a, uh, a little uh, hygrometer, which I will put on top of the tobacco after I've just tried to judge it. Yeah, of course it's very, very dry. And uh, perhaps further down the tin, it might be more moist. But anything in this, these top layers that I've felt that is completely dried out. Um, I will now put the hygrometer in and uh, close it for a little while to using this handy seal. Well, it's been about half an hour and that should be enough time for the hygrometer to acclimatize. And what I'm getting here is uh, 60%, which is not bad. Ideal tobacco is around the 70, 75 mark, marked in black there, you see. Um, and now it's already started to go down. So there was some humidity in the tobacco after all these years. That rubber seal here gave me some hope that, that there was at least a partial seal, if not a vacuum. But very, very clearly this is going down now from 60 quite significantly. So that's better, much better than I had hoped. So we have a broken flake, a very fine one, but it's a broken flake. And uh, we will have a look at the colors a bit more closely and I will now attempt to remove this bag from the tin to examine the inside of the tin. So I'm trying to use a rocking motion as, as far as I can. And that has worked. And I'll lay this carefully down here. And the tin is absolutely in pristine condition. Even if that's just 60 years, there's no rust at all. Quite incredible, huh? quite incredible. Goodness me, I think uh, Louis Doubleman would be very proud to know that the packaging had uh, Born up over all those decades so well. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I think the operation was uh, thus far a success. Well, let's have a little bit look at this tobacco on a white surface. Quite dark. I think over the years it probably has gotten darker than it was. Even putting the lamp very close to it, I still 
find it very, very dark. There's some lighter shades of brown you see there, but otherwise it's very quite uniform. It's a little bit more. Yeah, you can see when you look closely, they are thicker pieces. This is not really, it looks a bit like a ribbon, but when you, when you look at some of these and you have to realize these have all shrunk. Um, so, you know, it, uh, they were, they were thicker when they were hydrated. And then you would see that these are broken flake, I think. Well, what I plan to do is to hydrate this tobacco. Um, I think it would not be much use to smoke in this condition um, as it's so dry. And the flavors need a little bit of, uh, of moisture. Well, I tell you what, I'll keep this little bit here. This is about a sort of bowl. And I'll try and smoke it as it is. This. I will now jar up with a hydrostone. And I'm pretty sure this will be smokable and we may even get some good flavors out. Right, so uh, what I've done is I jarred up uh, these three tins, uh, jars. I put a hydrostone in them to rehydrate more thoroughly your tobacco. And I ran out of hydrostones. So uh, these two containers, uh, jars, I have no hydrostone in them. Uh, now, the quantity in this seven ounce tin, seven ounce tin, was surely more than seven ounces. Uh, this is dry weight. I think there were at least 11, not counting this little dry um, bowl of tobacco, which I will smoke now. So uh, I shall now report on my smoke of this tobacco. Tobacco I will do now. My wife, uh, I gave her the bag to sniff at. She has much better nose than me. And you know what she said? She said, this is very pleasant and uh, it's a fruit note of some kind. She thought it was like peach. Uh, she said there's no vinegary or anything like that. So uh, the Tokai wine doesn't seem to have um, oxidized all to uh, vinegar. Um, so that's encouraging too. Let's try this in a pipe. Right, well I've loaded uh, that bowl of tobacco into this meerschaum pipe, uh, because I always like um, a meerschaum to try and capture as much of the flavors as I can. Uh, it will take a, a short while to penetrate the uh, filter, so come back to you in about 20 minutes. And so it's about 20 minutes later, and um, as I expected, it, it, it burns pretty hot and uh, fast if you just take that dry tobacco and put it in there. It didn't really get any flavors. Um, but, uh, you know, it does smoke. Uh, so I think the, the only thing uh, I can now try is after some rehydration time in those jars, I'll try it again. And I, I know with other tobaccos, even uh, ones that are not old at all, that makes a dramatic difference. Um, 
So I've still got some hope that that might still have unlock some flavours that I can pick up. I'll certainly try it probably a week and 10 days in another pipe, this one probably, just to see how it goes. There we are, but what a great momentous day. And it was great fun opening that tin and I, I hope you enjoyed the whole uh, thrill of that. Take care everyone, look after yourselves, bye bye.